Let's talk about Z fighting. I'll show you what it is, and then I'll talk about why it occurs. You can see the side of my box is fighting, as far as the depth is concerned. The Z of my box is fighting with the depth of that blue plane that I rendered in this demo. It doesn't necessarily have to do anything with the near plane and the far plane. It just happens to be that I've rendered a blue plane in my scene so I could teach you. And I rendered a box and the side of the box is also a plane. And both planes are sitting at the exact same depth coordinate in the world. Okay, I've, I've taken this 3D scene and I've actually rendered it to a camera. That I've talked about this camera in the middle here a lot. Oh, come on this camera right here. I've talked a lot about this camera, but in the meantime, there's another camera that I've been ignoring. It's this camera that I'm flying around. And this camera that I'm flying around has to go through the whole model view projection thing, and we take the 3D world and smash it to 2D space. That's literally happening with this camera I'm flying around. There's no way that my screen actually turned 3D. Even to give you these three-dimensional demos, I have to follow the rules of 2D. Well, what we're seeing is some depth fighting, some Z fighting, Okay, the, here's the center of the camera we're looking at into our screen. This is roughly the center of the window. And into the screen, there's some depth, and all these fragments have to go through the same depth test. And sometimes the blue plane wins, and sometimes the plane that makes up the side of the box wins. just depends on how we're oriented. And this has to do with floating point error. I know when you use a float or a double, you feel like you're getting this nice continuous number, but you're not. You're on a computer, and computers are still quantized, meaning they're zeros and ones. And the floating point number line is also quantized as well. I'm giving you a rush tour of it. If you want to learn about the details, go look at my floating point arithmetic and floating point numbers videos. But essentially, here's the floating point number line, and let's put zero here, and let's put one here, and you may think there are an infinite number of numbers between zero and one, which there are in the world that we live in, but on computers there aren't. Okay, It's like 0.1, this is going to be really crude, but 0.1 is a number, and 0.2, and you can't be 0.11, well you can't be 0.11, but there are numbers that cannot be stored in a computer using floating point numbers. Here's a good exercise for you. I think 0.7 is actually a number we cannot store in a computer. Assign that to a float, hover over it with your debugger, and I think you'll get 0.699999 or something like that. So due to that error that we get with floating point numbers, we get this Z fighting. In this particular case, it so happens to be that the plane of the cube and the plane, this blue plane, are at the same exact value. And you can even see this line I've tried to draw here, this Z equals negative 2 line right here. It's, it's also fighting as well with the blue plane and the plane of my box here. So that's Z fighting. And you may think, well, what's the big deal? Of course, I, I guess that makes sense with the depth test. Some fragments will pass and some will fail, depending if they're that close in floating point numbers, they will fail. Well, what does this got to do with anything? Well, when I was new to graphics and I learned about the near plane and the far plane, I said, you know what? This is stupid. Why do we even have these values? Let's let's bring the near plane as close as we can to the camera. In fact, I'd even bring it closer. I'd put it right in front of the camera. I'd have a near plane value of, I think, 0 .001. And then my far plane value, instead of saying 4, I'd say 10 gabillion zillion. Send it way out there. All right, so let's push our far plane as far out as we can at least as far as my sliders go, and it's only 25 in this case, but the problem with splitting your planes so far apart is that all the objects from the near plane to the far plane have to be smashed into projected space, which is from positive 1 here, so you can't see it off the screen, but let me turn my camera. All these objects out in 3D space, when we project them, their depth has to fall between negative 1 right here and positive 1 right here. And if we're using floating point arithmetic, if we try to go with a large depth value here, when we smash it to negative 1 to positive 1, all of a sudden we're not going to get a true depth. We may have I don't know, a plane here and a plane right next to it. But because I said, let's have these two near planes and far planes so far apart, all of a sudden these two planes right there become one plane as far as the depth test goes. And then we'll get some Z fighting. Okay, let me see if I can illustrate this even more. I'm going to move this blue plane right up against the cube. Okay, you see that it's at 2, it's right against the cube, but I'm actually going to bump it down just 1, it's 0 
See how it's 1.99? Now I am 0 0.01 units away from the cube. In fact, if I fly my camera here, uh, I can barely, if not, see it. There's just a teeny tiny gap. I can barely see it. I don't know if you can see it on the recording, but there's a teeny tiny gap there, which when I'm close up to the cube, yeah, no Z-fighting. Z-fighting's gone. But then what if I take my camera and I line up best I can to the front of the cube and I say, let's go out and out and out. Let's fly away. Fly away, fly away, fly away. Bring my camera down. Get further and further away. Line up with this. And just keep going. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but you see the cube? I know it's really small, but the cube is bleeding through the plane there. Once we get far out here, the cube will bleed into the plane. You see that? Did you see that? There, the cube's bleeding through the plane. Okay, not a, not a huge deal, but... If you're in an outdoor environment, if you're trying to make a game where you're in an outdoor environment and you just set your far plane as far as possible, all of a sudden the mountains that should be behind the trees will start bleeding through the trees that are sitting on top of the mountains because of this Z-fighting effect. So let me reposition the camera back to where it should be. Now you can see up close we don't have this problem, but when we got further and further away, we did have that Z-fighting. And let me tell you why that why that is. First of all, hopefully you're realizing you want your near plane and your far plane to be as close as possible together without ruining your scene because all the values inside of this depth have to be smashed to negative one to positive one range simply for that depth test. But then another artifact, let me move the cube into projected space and the planes are still in camera space but the cube, we said, you know what, the cube, it's face was right up against the near plane here and the back was against the far plane so that's easy to map a two units it's two units from here to here that's easy to map two units to two units that's why our cube maintains as much depth as it does but watch what happens as the cube sits in projected space and I say let's bump that far plane out watch what happens to our projected cube you see how the cubes getting less and less depth as I move that far plane out, I bring the far plane in, the cube takes up more of that range. But as I take that far plane out, the cube takes up less of that range. Same thing with the near plane. If I move the near plane closer to the camera, you see that the cube moves the other direction. Because this side of the cube right here is not near as near as it was to the near plane when the cube was sitting out there. We're adding some gap here. And so the cube, as far as its depth is concerned, it gets further and further away from the near plane. It's kind of interesting seeing seeing the camera space on the right and the projected space on the left behave like that. But notice as I take the far plane way out to 25 and the near plane way close to the camera, the cube has much less depth as it originally did because it it was essentially normalized from its three-dimensional depth to this positive one to negative one range. In fact, let me just move the cube back into camera space. Here's the cube. If I fly out to the side here, try to get both of the planes in view. If, if I had an orthogonal projection, which is another type of projection, but we'd see that, you, well, you can still see it. The cube is sitting up here at the front of what we're about to smash into projected space. Then we have all this space out here that's unused. And so we'll have negative one right here, positive one right here, and the cube's going to take up roughly this leftish area in projected space. Let's strafe over so we can see the negative one to one. We're pretty far out here, but here's negative one to one, and I'll smash the cube back into projected space. But something should feel kind of odd to you when I do that. Here's camera space, projected space, camera space, projected space. And uh, what's going on here, or at least the issue, I hope you identified the issue, but from the near plane to way out here in the far plane, the middle is somewhere right here. Okay, and the cube is left at the middle. So this middle in camera space, in projected space, this is the middle right there. Okay, negative one, one, projected space middle is right here. So I would expect the cube to smash into this range right there. But instead, when I say project that cube, 
the cube doesn't even get cl it's close. It's kind of close to the middle, but it's actually sitting way out here, which would make you think, oh, the cube came from out here. Well, what's really going on, it's ingenious how they came up with this algorithm, but with the depth test, when we do a perspective projection, values that are closer to the camera get a lot more detail than things that are far away. And I can't remember the exact number, but, but the depth range of negative 1 to positive 1, well, 0 is not sitting in the middle right here. Instead, 0 is going to sit way out here. Because with the depth test, generally, your camera is going to have stuff right in front of it. You're going to fly around the world, and things are going to be sitting pretty close to the camera. And so we want much more detail with things that are closer to the camera than things that are further away. And so this back area ends up rendering to roughly around here somewhere, whereas all this right here gets gets smashed into uh, negative 1. I don't know why I put a 0 there. Negative 1 to maybe... 0.5. Okay, so there's a range of 1.5 there, whereas things that are way out further away from the camera, they get 0.5 of the projected space range. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. It's, it's not a perfectly linear projection when we go from camera space to projected space. We like to, things that are closer to the camera, we like to maintain as much depth as possible so that we don't get Z fighting right next to the camera. Because chances are if something's way out here, it's going to fail the depth test anyway. There'll be something in front of it.